Hi guys, I'm Mary Poplin with Imagineer Systems, and today we're going to be going over using the insert module for paint. In this example specifically, we're going to add a matte painting and clouds to this blown out foggy shot. So here's the before, and here is the after. And we're going to show you exactly how you can do this using just Mocha Pro and the insert module and a line surface. Then we will export your render. So let's get started. Now how do we do that? Well the first thing we do is we select our X points and we track the left side of the screen by grabbing all these hills and selecting our shape. We turn on our surface tool and we align this about the area where we want to put our matte painting, the first part of our matte painting anyway. We call this the left side track and we're just going to go ahead and turn perspective on and hit track forward. All right, so you can see right away that we actually have a problem, and that is perspective is messing up our track because it's actually tracking the shift of the hills. And we wanna actually just track translation scale and rotation. So we're gonna do that by just selecting shear and perspective and turning them off just like this, and then we're going to retrack our object. And what you're gonna see is that's gonna look a thousand times better. We're not gonna have any shift and warp happening. And that's because the objects are so far away that there really is effectively no perspective on them because there's no parallax. Next, we're gonna track the right side of the screen. Again, we just select an X-spline, draw a shape, and we're going to close our shape. And then we're going to take our surface tool and shrink it so that we can see better how we're tracking. From here, we're just going to call this right side track, and then we're going to turn shear off and hit track backwards. All right, so if I'm happy with that, we're going to go ahead and click on the remove tab, and in the remove tab, we're going to select a, any layer, and we're gonna make sure it's visually on and hit create clean plate. What that will do is this will save a clean plate inside of my results folder, I'm going to save a clean plate at the beginning and end of this shot. Over in Photoshop, we're going to load our clean plates by navigating to our results folder. And once in our results folder, we're going to select both of our clean plates and open them. And then we're going to go ahead and go to our view and turn our extras off. And now we're going to start painting some castles. Actually, let's start painting on our first frame first. We go to View, Extras, and then we're going to zoom in on this section of buildings here, and I'm going to expand these buildings to be slightly more ostentatious castles. Let's make a new layer, select a paintbrush. We're going to use Alt to select some colors from these buildings that exist here already, and I'm gonna start painting. Now, this is not a matte painting tutorial, so basically all I'm doing is I am pulling colors from the areas of the picture already and using those to build different shaped buildings that don't look so modern. So let's zoom out a little bit and see what this looks like. I feel like that looks pretty decent and a little larger than the scale actually is, but I think it's gonna read just fine. They're gonna be giant castles. So we're gonna save this, just go ahead, and actually we're going to copy this. So we're gonna we're actually going to save this as a PNG, as a transparent PNG, so that we can just load it right in to our insert module with no problem. I'm just using a very easy format. And we're going to switch the compression to none. It's just pretty fast. Now we're going to take this layer and we're actually going to copy it and we're going to paste it into our second layer because we're going to use the previous matte painting that I made as a template for some of the buildings on the other side of the hill. So we're just going to move this and then we're going to start painting again. And it's just as exciting as it looks. So from here what we're going to do is we're going to save this as another transparent PNG. So we go to save as, we go to PNG, and then we name this transparent so that we can load it very easily back into Mocha. And again, we wanna make sure that we save this with as little compression as possible, and we just go ahead and hit OK. So the last thing we wanna do is we actually wanna add clouds to this blown out sky. So let's go to Canvas Size, select the far right. We're gonna change this to Pixels, and we're gonna make 1920 by 1080 into 3840 wide. 
And from here, we're going to take our other frame, and because it's our first and last frame, and we're going to drop our other frame onto this frame. We're gonna just overlay it really quickly and line everything up. And from here, we're gonna use this as a guide for our clouds, so let's just blend them together a little bit, just like that. Use our crop tool, and then we'll start to overlay our clouds over the top of this system. So let's just open up some clouds drop them over the top, adjust their size. We're gonna adjust some opacity here. And we're gonna start cleaning all of this up by erasing the bottom, blending it over the top. We're gonna match some of the colors, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until we get something that we like the way it looks. And obviously this takes some tweaking uh, because I'm probably more of a perfectionist than I need to be, but I want the colors to look really good. And from here, we're just gonna erase just a little bit more blend everything together, make it transparent, and go to File, Save As, and again, we're gonna do a transparent PNG. And again, we're going to call this transparent on the end of the file name so that I know what the heck I'm doing. We might just call this clouds transparent. Yeah, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We hit Save, again, no compression, and we're going to take this back over to Mocha. So back in Mocha, we're going to select the layer that we want to bring our first frame painting on. So that's gonna be our left side. So with left side, we go to the insert panel and we take our surface tool. And because this is frame one, we're going to click the align surface button. That's gonna push all four corners to the edge. And now we're going to go to import our clip that we made. So we're gonna to go to results and we're going to pick our first frame and we're gonna pick the transparent PNG of our first frame. So we go ahead and hit open, we hit import. And from here, what, we, what we'll notice is that it will now take our mat and move it along with our shot, just like that. It's really that easy. It's not even a little bit of a problem. The next step is we're gonna pick our right side. We're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna align our surface at the end frame, right? The last frame. So we hit align surface and now that's going to move matched up to the end frame. So we're going to make sure our layer is selected actually. And we're going to go back down to insert clip and we're gonna import and we're going to choose our last frame, transparent PNG, hit open. And we're going to import that and our matte painting will move nicely around with our shot as well just like that. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to import our clouds. So we're gonna make a new layer. And this new layer is going to be any old frame. We're actually not going to use a line surface for this, but we're gonna make a big fat shape. And after we've made our big fat shape, we're going to go to our insert clip section. And in our insert clip, we are going to import our clouds. We hit choose, we select our clouds transparent, hit open, import, and we're not gonna align this. What we're gonna do is we're going to move our surface tool until this looks correct in the shot. And once we have the proper alignment, we're going to link this to one of our track layers. It's gonna be really easy. But this is a section where you would not actually want to use the align surface tool. You want to actually move your surface and make sure that it's exactly what you want. So you can see the difference really well. So we're gonna link this to our left side track. And now we're going to have our clouds move really nicely through the scene without having to do a whole lot of work again, because we've already done the tracks. Now those clouds are really static and I feel like I need for those clouds to look like actual moving clouds because clouds don't look like they're glued to the background. They actually look like they have some animation to them. So we need to animate this uh, relative to the track. So we go to our insert, we call our layer cloud, just so we know what we're doing. We're gonna turn show mesh warp on. This is the most underutilized tool in Mocha in my opinion. And now we're going to adjust our point mesh warp through this shot in order to make a nice little animation of our clouds. So we go to the end frame and you'll notice that these key frameable points actually animate between the two keyframes that we have made and use our track to drive the rest of the motion just like that. So it's really that simple. And I think I kind of want to adjust this spline a little bit more. The next thing we're actually going to want to do is we're going to want to turn on motion blur. So we're going to change this to, hmm, let's change it to one. 
That's probably going to be too much though, but let's see what it looks like. So we turn our motion blur to one on all of our frames. And then we're going to render it and see what that looks like. So all layers, the motion blur has been changed to one. And now we're going to hit render forward. And when I hit render forward, I can see that this is actually just a little bit too blurry on the motion blur. My castles are kind of getting more blurred than my background, and that's not really going to do. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to stop, and then I'm going to need to adjust my motion blur settings back down to what they were at before, which is a default, default 0.25. So we're going to change this for all of these layers, and then we're going to hit re-render. So let's quickly do that, and then let's just hit our render button. Now we're going to render this really quickly. Obviously I've sped this up just because you guys don't want to sit through a render. And then once we're done, what we're going to do is we're going to go to File Export Rendered Clip. So that's how you export your clips out. So we go to File Export Rendered Clip, and we're going to change our method to QuickTime Movie, we're going to pick our folder. We're just going to save this into our Castle Matte Painting folder, and we'll select what we want to call it, and then we're going to call this, let's see, Clean Composite, and then we're going to hit OK. Now in animation, or H.264, or any of those things, you actually have to keyframe every one frame, or however many frames you like, but you have to set a keyframe or it won't render. From there it just renders out, and then you're done you end up with something that looks a lot like this. So here's the before and here's the after on our matte paintings. Now I am Mary Poplin. If you have any questions, please feel free to visit our website at www.imagineersystems. Thanks for tuning in and I hope you have a wonderful day.